What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown. Have you seen the new positions that have recently been revealed in the most recent 13F filings from Michael Burry's portfolio? Because there are two big positions that everybody's talking about right now. Some are even calling it the new big short. One of them is a bet against the stock price of Tesla, and the other one is a bet for high inflation and potentially even hyperinflation. So today we're going to break it down, and I'm going to give you the truth about this because even though the headlines are making a giant deal out of this, it might not be as big of a deal as it seems, number one. And number two, one of these might actually be a pretty bad bet, specifically the inflation bet. Ready? Let's dive in. Michael Burry, if you're not aware, gained widespread attention from accurately predicting and betting against the housing market, specifically subprime mortgages, before the great financial crisis. He was the one that was played by Christian Bale in the hit movie, The Big Short. Now, recently, he's come up again in the news uh, when the whole GameStop short squeeze happened. Michael Burry was one of the early buyers of GameStop stock strictly because of how high the short interest was on that stock. He knew there had to be a short squeeze at some point. So he was one of the first ones to buy it. He was able to make a lot of profits on that position. And now he's in the media again from two big bets that have recently shown up in the most recent 13F filings. So first, let's look at an overview of his portfolio and what these two big bets are. Number one, we've got a giant bet against Tesla. $534 million notional value that Tesla will drop. And so based on the notional value, this is the largest position in his portfolio. Now, the second big bet that is making most of the news is his bet on inflation. Now, this bet is spread out between multiple positions, but basically all of them are various ways to bet on the price of treasuries going down, which is interest rates going up. So now that we know what the two big bets are that are making news, let's take a look at the first reason why it's possible that neither of these are a big deal or even applicable anymore. Number one, this is old. 13F filings are massively delayed. And all we know about this is that at the end of quarter one, these positions were in his account. It's very possible and it's more than likely, in my opinion, that at least with Tesla, he no longer holds these positions at all. Next. Next, I want to show you the big miscommunication that's happening all across the media, specifically with his bet against Tesla. If you look at this portfolio, you can see that it has a value assigned to it of $534 million. Now, regulatory reporting requirements mean that this value, $534 million, is a notional number not the market value of his actual position. Now, if you've ever traded options before, or if you've ever learned about options before, you know there's a massive difference between notional and market value. What he actually has here is puts, he owns put contracts representing 800,000 shares of Tesla. This means that he owns 8,000 puts because every put, every contract represents 100 shares. We also don't know what the strike price of these puts are, or what the expiration date of these puts are. These put options might already be exercised, expired, or sold. But just for example, so you can see the massive difference between the notional value, which is the value of all the shares that the contracts represent, versus the market value of the actual position in the portfolio, let's just see what the value actually is if these were the August uh, 600 puts. If he bought 8,001 puts expiring in August at the strike price of 600, right now, the cost for the value of that position would be about $43 million. Now, that's still a big position, obviously, but it's nowhere near $534 million. And let's say it wasn't that long out of a bet. Let's say it was a shorter bet with an expiration date that was a lot closer. Let's say, I don't know, this Friday. Right now, the puts on Tesla, the 600 strike price puts that expire this Friday, if you bought 8,000 of them, it would only cost you $2 million. So depending on the strike and the expiration chosen for these, depending on the date in which he actually purchased them, whether he purchased them just just very recently before that 13F filing came out or whether these were something that he had been holding for a couple of months, the actual cost for this position in his portfolio is potentially nothing 
compared to the notional value of the shares that these contracts represent. And if all of this options talk has you lost and you have no idea what I'm talking about, what are you still doing? Get yourself down into the description of this video and take my options course. I've got two courses, one for beginners, one for advanced, and teach yourself about how to use options at the very least so that you can understand stuff like this so you don't accidentally follow somebody into a bet that you don't fully understand what it is. So in summary, the problem with the Tesla bet specifically is that number one, we don't know if he still has it simply due to the delay, the lag in when we actually get to see these filings. Number two, we don't know what the strike price is and we don't know what the expiration date of these contracts is, meaning we don't actually know how big of a bet this is for his overall portfolio, which makes a difference when you're trying to consider how sure somebody is about making a specific bet. Okay, now let's move over to his other big bet that is making even more news, which is his bet that inflation is going to go up. Now, I said at the beginning of the video that this this might be a very bad bet for Michael Burry's portfolio. And that might come as a surprise to you because you know, if you've been around this channel at all, that I think inflation is a lot higher than what's being reported and is only going to continue to accelerate upwards. So here's why I think his position is a bad bet. He has a position betting on the price of treasuries going down. Now, again, this is spread out through multiple bets. He's using a variety of instruments such as leveraged and inverse ETFs that have treasuries inside of them and buying calls or puts on those funds. But when you put them all together, they're all just betting on the price of treasuries going down. Now in a normal market, if you expect inflation, this is a fantastic bet to make. And here's why. Inflation starts by an increase in the supply of money. If you think about Monopoly, think about a banker just doubling everybody's money who's playing the game. At first, there's no changes, but eventually, since people have more money, they're willing to pay more for the properties. Properties get bid up in the auctions. And then what happens is rents start to go up as well because people now have more money. They can afford to put houses and hotels on their properties. And it gets to the point where going around the board is so much more expensive than it was before the money supply doubled that all the benefits from that extra money are gone and potentially even more so because they've been concentrated maybe in the hands of a few who got to buy the properties before the general price level of everything else was increased. And so at least some people are much worse off than they were before. And the process continues and more money is handed out and it continues the acceleration of the increase in prices. Now this system is exactly what's going on right now as the total supply of money is growing. That money is forced into the economy, bidding up the prices of all the goods and services that that money is chasing after because there's not a corresponding increase in those goods and services. And so prices must go up to compensate. Now, in this environment, imagine you're going to lend some money to somebody. Let's say you want to lend out $1,000. Today, you could spend that $1,000 to buy an iPhone, or you could lend that $1,000 out for one year at 1%. So let's say you do that. You lend that $1,000 out, 1%. In one year, you get back $1,010. Now you take that and you go to buy your $1,000 iPhone and realize that that iPhone is now not $1,000, it's $1,100. So did you really make money? Well, you turned your $1,000 into $1,010, but the cost of living went up by 10%. So now you can't afford to buy with that same $1,000 what you were going to buy before. You made 1%, but you lost 10% in uh, the cost of living rise, which means that you netted a negative 9%. Now you have the opportunity again. Are you gonna loan out $1,000 at 1%? Absolutely not. If you're gonna lend your money out, you're going to demand at least 10% interest on your money because that's how much purchasing power you're losing by not spending it immediately. And so as inflation takes off, and the cost of living increases, and the general level of prices is going up, lenders must demand a higher interest rate when they go to lend or else they're getting back dollars that don't go as far. They are worth less. And so that's why interest rates in a normal environment go up along with inflation going up. Now, government bonds or treasuries are loans that are made to the United States government. So if people expect inflation is 4% or 5% or higher, the minimum that anybody would accept on a loan to the government is 4% or 5% or higher. Nobody would lend for less. Now, Michael Burry specifically thinks that inflation will be very high. He's tweeted about this a lot, made references to hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany, and said last time, everybody said, why didn't you warn us? And he said, well, I did, but this time I will have proof. So he very strongly believes there's going to be high inflation specifically due to the massive increase in the money supply. Now, in a normal market, this would indeed push interest rates higher, which pushes bond prices lower. 
And if you don't understand the inverse relationship between bond prices and bond yields, check out this video starting at minute three. I explain in perfect detail that relationship, the inverse relationship between bond prices and yields. So here's the problem with Michael Burry's position. I think he's right about the inflation. I just think his bet on treasuries going down is wrong. In a free market where the Federal Reserve was not buying any treasuries right now, interest rates would already be much higher than they are. This means that the Federal Reserve has the, both the capacity and the will to keep interest rates low by buying as many treasuries are needed in order to keep rates where they want them. Even if everybody started a fire sale of treasuries right now, the Federal Reserve could keep rates low and keep bond prices up simply by the power of the printing press. And the reason they do this is because if rates go up, the United States government is insolvent. The only way they're paying their bills is to take out new debt to pay off their old debt and excess debt beyond that in order to fund the, their expenses beyond what they're receiving from tax income. This means if the interest rates on that new debt when they take out that new debt exceeds by too much the old debt that they're paying off. That means the cost of just paying the interest on the debt becomes too high to where they can't afford to pay their bills at all. And so the Fed keeps interest rates down in order to prevent the United States government from being insolvent, enabling the United States government to take out as much debt as they need to fund as much expenses as they have. Now, the final thing here is that it's important to remember that Michael Burry is a trader, not a long-term investor. He strictly looks at the mechanics of the system and he recognizes when there's too much money on one side of the equation and the pendulum has to swing back over to the other side. This is exactly what happened when he shorted subprime. And it's the exact same thing that happened when he went long GameStop. And it's the exact same thing that's happening right now if he still has the positions when he's betting against Tesla stock and betting against the price of treasuries. With, with the Tesla bet, it's important to remember that the position size may be inconsequential to his overall portfolio because we have no idea what the market value is, only what the notional value is, which doesn't tell us much. And then with treasuries, I think Think he's underestimating both the will and the capacity of the Federal Reserve to suppress and keep interest rates low. Now, on the other hand, it's also possible that he's betting on a very short-term spike in interest rates. If there's a fire sale of treasuries that hits the market all at once, interest rates just start to skyrocket and it takes one or two days for the Federal Reserve to step in and ramp up their purchases enough to absorb all the selling and push those rates back down, lifting up those bond prices back up. It's very possible he's waiting for something like that to happen and he'll close out his position immediately. And personally, I wouldn't be surprised at all if something like that were to happen. I don't think rates can go up for an extended period of time, but it could definitely happen for a short burst. So in conclusion, these two bets that the media is making a big deal about are not all that they seem. And if you are making investment decisions that are based on what legends like this are doing, it is critical that you understand the mechanics of the system so that you know what he is actually doing. Otherwise, you may be the person that people like him are unloading their position on after they've already made their gains, leaving you holding the bag. You can take my word for it. You don't want to be somebody who's left holding the bag. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.